Hello, I'm Pastor Dave Lutcher. I am the bridge pastor here at St. Paul's, and I am bringing you the midweek devotion for this week. I'd like to read to you from the third chapter of the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father, and our crucified and risen Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer is something we say in nearly every worship service. Sometimes it is said with the prayers of the church. Sometimes it is said just before we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, a kind of preparation in the direction of our hearts and minds. It is often even said when concluding a meeting at the church. The last few times I've prayed the Lord's Prayer, one phrase has stuck out to me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a tall order. A tall order for God's will to rule as fully on this spinning planet as it does in the kingdom of heaven. And we know it's not there yet. And when I pray those words, I wonder, what is my part in all that? I think of God's will, but I compare it then to my inadequacy. What are my inadequacies? If I tried to answer that fully and honestly, this would be a long, long midweek devotion. But maybe in some way, you even share that feeling with me. As a Christian, have you ever felt inadequate? Have you ever knew that there was a big task or a huge problem to be faithfully faced and you just thought you weren't up for the task? If you don't think you're inadequate, Ask those closest to you about your inadequacies. Wives, ask your husbands. Husbands, ask your wives. A pastor can ask the congregation. I've been here just a little while, but I'm sure you could all make a list. And if you're a parent of a teenager, you don't have to ask at all. Those youths will tell you very freely. But perhaps the biggest inadequate character we know is the cartoonist Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown seems totally inept at life. Nothing ever goes right for him. Because that happens, we too can understand Charlie. We can chuckle 
and some way to feel better about ourselves and laugh at Charlie Brown and our own inadequacies a bit more. One night, Charlie Brown is laying in bed and says, sometimes I lay awake at night and I think, what went wrong? Then I hear a voice say, this is going to take more than one night. Where Charlie, always drawn to the little red-haired girl named Heather, wondered about her and said, the little red-haired girl has lots of friends. I don't have any friends. They say opposites attract. She is really something, and I am really nothing. How more opposite can we get? We convince ourselves that we're not attractive enough, or skilled enough, or smart enough. We don't compare to a movie star or the perfect family in a Hallmark movie. But the good news for us is that God loves the inadequate. And why not? God created them and created them in love. In fact, God uses all our inadequacies to serve God's purpose in our world. I just read to you one story about them, Moses. Moses was a leader of Israel, and Israel was probably in the most desperate time for leadership. Even at the time of Jesus, remember it was Moses, Elijah, Jesus, and a few disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration, a story that we listen to just before Lent begins. Moses was Israel's superhero, right? But he was also inadequate. Just ask him. We carry the same burdens of inadequacies that Moses carried. The first inadequacy to confront Moses from saying yes to a position of leadership was his overwhelming guilt over his past failures. You see, Moses would not have even passed a criminal check in the state of Pennsylvania. I think as Moses considered leadership, he also remembered back, back to the time that he killed an Egyptian man. He killed him as a crime of passion due to the deep love that he had for his people and the cruelty that was brought upon them. Then he tried to literally cover up the crime by burying the murdered man in the sand. Sometimes our past failures hold us back too. They make us feel like we're failures, unable to do right, and paralyzed to move forward. But through Moses, we're also reminded that by God, we can be restored of our sinfulness. Our God is one of kindness and forgiveness, and he will continue to provide for every need that we have. Secondly, our inadequacy can come from our unwillingness to set, accept God's will and way as a change for our lives. I think it must have been difficult for God to be more definite in his plans to Moses than he did, speaking to Moses through a burning bush. Moses couldn't believe it. The bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. Then he heard God's voice. I have observed. God had already known Moses, watched Moses, and knew the very best and worst to him. God saw Moses. God sees us too. I know the misery of my people in Egypt. God knew their pain. God feels our pain. In fact, in Jesus, God takes away our pain and guilt of sin and makes it God's own. Our God is a God of tremendous love and pity. I have come down to save. God knows and God is willing to come among us. And he did that in Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, the word becoming flesh. The inadequacy of Moses does not condemn him for God's work. I will send you, God says. God has chosen to use Moses for his work, for the liberation of God's people. And so he continues to use all of us. Say your name. And God has used you. I have seen, I know, I have come down to save. I will send you. But even with all of that, Moses still doubted. God had given him the commission. But Moses still wasn't ready to trust it and accept it into his life. He needed a new understanding of what God was going to do for him. God tries to strengthen the bond with Moses by giving Moses God's own identity and name. God's very name showed unparalleled nature. I am. I am includes both the past and the present. 
I am includes the future. I was, I am, I shall always be. A God that does not fail or disappoint. A great power that enables us to do great work. Even the biggest and most earthly power of Moses' day, the Pharaoh, would not be any match to God's power. The fact that Moses recognizes his weakness and inadequacy in contrast to God finally makes Moses the right person for the job. God uses the inadequate. And that ends up underlying God's power. After God's spirit is in that person, they're never the same anymore. I'm a fan of watching home transformations on HGTV. And to me, it's fascinating and oftentimes miraculous how they turn a rundown house to a beautiful new home. So God does the same thing with us as we allow God's will to be done in us. It happened to Gideon. It happened to Jeremiah, even though he claimed, I am only a youth. It happened to a young virgin named Mary and a common carpenter, Joseph. They became the father and mother of our Lord. Paul, the missionary extraordinaire, claimed his own thorn in the side, but still God used him. Moses uses all the excuses. I'm not important enough. What will I say? They won't listen to me. I'm not a good speaker. Please, just send someone else. We too are called to action by God. We're spirit-filled and we're spirit-led. Go, Moses says, God says to Moses, And so he says the same thing to us. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? We wish to feel capable and ready. We want to take a risk and act. One great help for me is that I don't do it alone. I do it with all of you here at St. Paul's, with Christians in our synod, in our ELCA, and all throughout the world. The Apostles' Creed reminds us of the communion of saints, the church of every time and every place. It's a big idea, but it also could be more personal too. Think of your communion of saints, those here, those who are part of the church triumphant, those who have shared faith with you and you have shared with them. Isaiah asked in the temple, God asked, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Despite our inadequacies and doubts, and faith and trust, we respond like Isaiah did, send me. God will use us for God's kingdom and for God's will to be done. Here I am, Lord, send me. Amen.